coral reefs. These are perhaps the best known marine habitats in the world. Made up from the accumulation of hard coral skeletons, these habitats are found in tropical, warm, shallow waters. Corals typically thrives in areas where the sea temperature remains in the high 20s. Covering just under 0.1% of the ocean's surface area, coral reefs provide habitats to thousands of marine species. These ecosystems are intricately linked with other marine habitats like mangrove forest and seagrass beds. The Western Indian Ocean is one of the world's hotspots for biodiversity. Coral has been thriving in this region for over 10,000 years and remains a key support to the high level of marine biodiversity in the region. Apart from the direct goods and services offered by coral reefs, there are also indirect ecosystem services such as coastal protection and revenue from tourism. The beauty and diversity of coral reefs attract many visitors. It is estimated that coral reef tourism annually generates billions of revenue to the travel industry and host nations. Coral reefs also support fisheries, with fish being the main source of protein throughout the region. However, not all is well for the coral reefs of the Western Indian Ocean. Pressures coming from multiple development activities such as housing, agriculture and tourism put immense stress on coral reefs. But perhaps the biggest threat to modern coral reefs are mass coral bleaching events. These events have a direct link to the increase in seawater temperature caused by climate change. Throughout the Western Indian Ocean, corals were bleached and died in large numbers in 1998 and again in 2016. As the structure of the dead coral breaks down, all that is left behind are beds of loose coral rubble. After a while, many of these reefs get colonized by fast-growing macroalgae. Once established, these macroalgae are difficult to get rid of and for corals to dominate the reefs again. The reefs of the region need a helping hand. We need to strengthen management of these important ecosystems to ensure their survival. In the Seychelles and Mauritius, efforts are underway to restore damaged coral reefs. The European Union is supporting countries in the Indian Ocean region to implement sustainable development goals. And we do this with our partners, for example, with the Indian Ocean Commission here in the Indian Ocean region. And the Biodiversity Programme is one of the key programmes implemented by the Indian Ocean Commission and funded by the European Union, which tackles also the issue of uh, conservation of the, of the reefs. We have achieved uh, some key results through this biodiversity program in relation to protection of the coral reefs. First of them is a study which was conducted through the program. It's a health study on the coral reefs. And this, I believe, is the first of its kind in the Indian Ocean region. The study, for example, took a very close look at the, the challenges in relation to the bleaching of the coral reef, which took place in 2016. This also, this program has um, built capacities of the local technical staff in terms of monitoring of the protection of the coral reefs. Over 100 people have been trained. I'm also happy to, to see that um, in Seychelles the program has, uh, has conducted um, a transplantation of the coral reefs. This is a very innovative technique to, to protect and restore coral reefs in, in the world. The European Union, through this biodiversity program, has contributed to the natural resource management in the Indian Ocean region. L'objectif de ce projet, réalisé en partenariat avec Nature Seychelles, c'est la restauration des récifs par la transportation des coraux. Des espèces de corail sont sélectionnées. Ensuite, on les fait grandir en pépinière pour les transplanter dans des jardins. Je dirais dans des jardins de corail. Nous avons beaucoup à apprendre pour améliorer la technique Mais ça a été tout de même, il faut le dire, un grand succès pour le programme Biodiversité. 
plus de 90% de corail replanté a survécu et des milliers de colonies ont été transplantées. Il est important que tous les acteurs soient impliqués, le gouvernement, le secteur privé, mais aussi la société civile. Concernant cette action spécifique, Nature Seychelles a déjà travaillé en partenariat avec un établissement hôtelier seychellois implanté sur l'île de Félicité, ce qui a permis entre autres d'informer, sensibiliser beaucoup d'acteurs importants, notamment les touristes. It was very important for us to work with the tourism industry. We've been working with the tourism industry for many, many years. We started to partner with, with, uh, with Felicite, Six Senses Resort. And I think that, that the purpose of it is actually twofold. One is to engage development, i.e. tourism in our case, in conservation. And two, to make everybody who comes to the Seychelles understand that we have an ecosystem that's very fragile and everybody needs to contribute to it. Different techniques are being used to grow corals for transplantation onto the reefs, some on experimental scales while others on large scales. Growing corals is however a young science and it comes with its frustrations and rewards. There was skepticism in the donor community but now you see that the scientific community is on board. You have entire scientific symposia just on coral reef restoration. And we see huge sort of advances in coral reef restoration practice and theory. This reef rescuer dives down to check on her nursery at Felicity Island. The corals in the nursery have been carefully selected. They form part of the shallow water coral colonies that were observed to have survived the mass coral bleaching event in 2016. First was to just uh, select colonies that survived the El Niño event because what we want to do is uh, just select corals that are a little bit uh, heat resistant and just start a reef that can adapt to climate change. We don't want to take corals that are suffering from climate uh, rising temperatures. So our first priority was to select survivals of uh, the El Niño event, 2016 El Niño event. We grew 42,000 fragments underwater. Okay, of at least, I think, 38 species. Out of that 38 species, not many of them grew. In fact, we found that only about eight species were actually the best to grow in the time span of a project. There is indeed a whole science behind selecting corals for restoration. As they go through this process, there is also a great deal of learning taking place. Challenges were many especially in making sure that the nurseries remained clean and orderly. A lot have been, has been done in terms of communication, awareness raising, and countries are really doing a lot. And even to the, to the aspects, for instance, we have seen that in Mauritius, uh, the government has now put in place a national coral reef network, which is within the institu one of the national institutions. In any such project, it is important to get the community on board. In Mauritius, members of the coastal communities underwent training to be able to effectively participate in coral reef restoration in a project led by the Mauritius Oceanography Institute and the Albion Fisheries Research Center. In this project, there is an awareness-raising element. There are different lectures that have been given to different local communities to make them aware of the importance of coral reefs, what can it bring to fishers, and also why it is that we need such coral diversity. In Mauritius, uh, we are undertaking a project um, as a community-based coral culture. The aim of the project is to uh, train the local communities, namely the fishermen, the fishers, in uh, the techniques for uh, coral culture and reef rehabilitation. How we know our island, our hotel, our amenities, our island touristic, we are able to do it, we même export de banque corail avec les autres pays. Et comment moi, je suis en train de me capable de donner une formation dans les autres pays à ce demain, qui est comme si je suis capable d'apprendre, qui nous capable de faire avec les banques corail. Fishermen were also on board, and on certain days of the week, they were transformed from fishermen to coral gardeners. The Marine Conservation Division uh, is uh, doing a lot uh, on marine, is working a lot on marine protected areas and we are also doing uh, like coral farming project. So by creating uh, marine protected areas, 
We are like promoting the conservation of marine biodiversity. With the Felicity project, um, uh, we have generated over 2,000 corals and we've planted over 1,000 corals. So I think that's a big success also, is that we can actually restore degraded areas in marine protected areas. Over the years, awareness on the need to restore coral reefs were developed, capacities were built and lessons were learned. I think we have something very unique. This region is very unique. Uh, we have a lot, a lot of capable people and we have invested a lot in our environment. And our future, I think, and our uh, economy depends a lot on our, on our, our environment, especially the, the small island states. We don't have anything else. Uh, we, can, we, we can look at certain countries where we've built our wealth on our environment. It is an indirect way of building our wealth through the tourism industry, through the fishing industry. And I think we should uh, try to keep that. I think we should start conserving whatever we have, okay? Identify those reefs at risk, identify the resilient reefs and immediately protect them. Nous espérons donc que le succès de ce projet va permettre la promotion de cette technique sur toute la sous-région. D'ailleurs, des actions similaires sont entreprises à Maurice avec l'appui du gouvernement mauricien. Ce qui cadre bien avec la politique de la Commission de l'Océan Indien et de notre partenaire, l'Union Européenne. Parce que, faut-il le répéter, la protection de nos ressources, c'est plus que jamais une priorité. Une priorité pour nous tous. It is hoped that the Coral Reef Restoration Project will act as a catalyst of greater things to come and will help in improving the status of coral reefs in the Western Indian Ocean region. The European Union and the Indian Ocean Commission will keep working together to ensure more effective biodiversity management in line with international agreements.